I'm going to kill him, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Betty, please. There isn't much you and I can do in this world, Letty, for obvious reasons. Well? But one thing I know I can do, and that's kill Whitey Rand. He's no good. He's hurting the sweetest girl in this carnival. I'm not going to let him get away with it. Don't talk about killing like that. Why not? What am I supposed to do, let Sally be hurt? Oh, no. She's old enough to know what she's doing. No girl is old enough to know what she's doing when a man like Whitey Rand is around. You've seen him operate. You've seen him swindle the suckers in that penny-pitching concession he has. Did you ever see anything so smooth? It still is no reason for you to get into a murder mess, Betty. No? What could happen to me if I killed him? What? I, I don't know. Of course you don't know. Don't you realize I'm one of the only persons in the world who can commit murder and not be punished? That's no reason for no you. No reason. It's all the more reason. I can kill Whitey Rand. I can be caught killing him. I can confess that I killed him. I can tell the police that I planned the crime in advance. Still, they can do nothing to me. Because of me? That's right. Because of you. You would be innocent. Yes. And they can't very well do anything to me without affecting you. That's right. Sister dear, I think this is the first time that being Siamese twins, having been born joined together, is going to do either of us any good. Breakfast ready? It will be when you are. Hey, did you hear the radio? I can't hear anything with this water running. Wait a minute. Huh? What happened? There was a murder over at the carnival at the end of town. A fellow named Whitey Rand was killed. Oh, is that all? Yeah, except that it's one of those mystery murders. Yeah? After the crowd had left, the fellow was found dead with a broken neck right on the midway. It's too bad. What's for breakfast? Don't you care about the murder? I sure, Molly, but I also care about my job. Okay. I gotta be breaking up a road in an hour, and I'd like to eat first. Uh, Isn't that reasonable? Oh, sure. Hey, you've got a little soap on your left ear. Oh. Wipe it off and come on in. Uh, Murder isn't your business. Oh, uh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Look, how's that soap on my ear? All off? Uh-huh. Well, come on then. Let's get some breakfast so I can be off to work. <laughs> You got a little competition from those pneumatic drills. Right. Hey, where'd you eat lunch, Joe? At the diner on the corner. Why? Did you hear the extra on that Whitey Rand murder? Nope. I didn't know the guy was killed when my wife told me when I was washing up this morning. What's the extra? The district attorney Markham is letting the carnival stay open till the killer is found. What kind of an extra is that? And that ain't all. The radio said that district attorney Markham called in Philo Vance to help solve the case. You know Philo Vance. I do? You know about him. Everybody does. He's a private investigator, and when it comes to solving murder cases, he's a genius. Well, that's fine. Only I got a steak waiting at home for me when I get through working. Molly cooked it. And, brother, when Molly cooks a steak, you can have your final advance. She's a real genius. <laughs> Where do you think you're going, Max? Inside the wagon. I understand the owner of this carnival uses it for an office. Sure he does. For a private office. That's why I'm outside, to see it stays private. I'm certain that's the reason. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go in and see Mr. Bryce. That's great, only I ain't excusing you. Look, my name is Vance. Philo Vance. I'm going in to see Mr. Bryce. You know, it's a funny thing. You say you're going in, I say you ain't. What do you think's gonna happen? Get out of my no, way. You don't. That's a matter of opinion. Uh, it, oh. It'll back up my opinion. Now, this will show you how wrong it is to be opinionated. <laughs> Sorry, my friend, but I'm going in to see Mr. Bryce. Pleasant dreams. Mr. Bryce? Come in. I'm not sucker enough to try and stop you. Thank you. You heard the conversation I had with your man outside, then. Yeah, I heard it. What's your pitch, Vance? A man named Whitey Rand was killed here at your carnival, Bryce. I want to know all about... About Rand? He worked here. Grabbed off a lot of soft with a penny-pitching gimmick. A lot of, uh... 
Soft money, folding money. Oh. Grand hired space here, set up a space he made his play. I imagine that means he operated a concession. Yeah. What girl did he run around with? Girl? Come on, you must understand that word. You know, girl. Oh, one of them things. Yeah. Why he was making a play for Sally Miller. And who didn't like it? What are you getting at? Grand was killed. I'm trying to find out whether or not jealousy was a motive. Who didn't like the fact that Whitey was making a play for Sally? Nobody liked it. Least of all, Crando, our strong man. And Rand's neck was broken, eh? Maybe I am on the right track. Where is Crando? He blew. You mean he's left? Uh Uh-huh. How about Sally Miller? Where's she? She blew. With Crando? Maybe. All I know is Crando wanted to put a hoop in her hand. That's a wedding ring. Oh. And he was doing good till Rand made his pitch. Got a lumpy, Vince? I hope not. Lumpy's a watch. What time is it? Oh. What time is it? Why, uh, it's exactly 4.30. Why? Look, you can come in here any time you like, but right now I got an appointment. Okay, if I blow? Yes. You wanted to know what time it was a moment ago. That's it, exactly. I'd say it was time I started to get some action on finding out who killed Whitey Rand. All right, step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up for a ride on the wheel. Picture making? Suckers to buy a ticket. Nothing wrong, Freddy. Only, why aren't you operating the mechanism? I'll let Johnny do it. He's been begging for a chance. Get back there and let Johnny make this pitch. That mechanism goes bad, we'll have a million dollars in lawsuits. Don't you think things are tough enough around here with Whitey Rand being murdered? Oh, well, Johnny's pretty good at running, Mr. Price. Look, Freddy, only two guys can really operate the well around. You and me. I know, but... Now get back there. I got trouble enough already, and I don't want any more. All right. And if I do get any more trouble, I don't want it should come from you. <laughs> You need to understand what you're saying if you continue crying, Miss Miller. I'm sorry, Mr. Markham. I'll, I'll try to stop. Uh, it's much better. Now, tell me, why did you decide to disappear from the carnival? I had to. I knew the police would question me about the murder of Whitey Rand, so I ran away, and then I knew that was the wrong thing, so I, I came to see you. It was very good that you did. I'm district attorney, not a person you can't trust. Well, I... Now, tell me uh, what you know of Rand's death. Well, I told you he liked me. Yes, I gather that much from what you said. And you mentioned a man named Crando, the carnival strongman. He liked you, too. Crando ran away with me, but I made him go. You can see him any time you like. He's at the boarding house where we all live. That's fine. Now, tell me why you came to me. Mr. Markham, my best friends at the carnival were Betty and Letty. Um, I'm almost afraid to ask who they are. They're Siamese twins. Uh, yes. Yes. They both disliked Whitey Rand. They didn't like the idea that he was taking me out after the shows. Oh? Betty told Whitey one night to leave me alone or she'd kill him. That's what I had to tell you. So one of the Siamese twins said that, did she? Now, tell me, Miss Miller, they're real Siamese twins? Nothing fake about them? Oh, definitely not. They were born joined together. They come from somewhere in Europe, I think. When Betty threatened Whitey, Letty, her sister, tried to calm her down, but it didn't do any good. This is a fine situation. If Betty made good on her promise to kill Whitey, what can I do about it? I can't possibly bring her to trial, considering the fact that Letty, her sister, is apparently innocent. You know, it's a funny thing that you bring that up, Mr. Markham. Why is that? That's exactly what Betty told Whitey Rand the night before he was killed. Yes, Markham, I understand about the Siamese twins. Rather confusing, isn't it? Rather. I'd say it was very confusing, Vance. What happens if you prove one of them killed Rand? I don't know. What are you doing, Vance? Watch the little red circle, Markham. Vance, we're working on a murder case, and you're pitching metal discs. What's the idea? This is the concession the late Whitey Rand operated. The idea is to stand here and toss a metal disc the size of a penny so that it goes in the red circle up there. Like this. It didn't go in the circle. It couldn't go in the circle, Markham. Couldn't? You see, the entire board is magnetized with the exception of the circle. No matter how close the disc you throw would come to the circle, the magnetic pull would draw it out of it. And Whitey Rand had a little racket going for me. Sort of, but I don't think that had anything to do with his being killed. You don't? No. Let me see now. We have how many suspects? Three that I know of. Mm. Sally Miller, the girl he was making a play for, Crando, her strongman boyfriend, and the Siamese twins. Or is that four? I couldn't say. But our problem at the moment is to narrow down those suspects until we... Well, that fire is over there at the carousel, Vance. 
Those wooden horses will go in a minute. Come on, let's see what we can do to help. All right. There's enough breeze blowing to spread the flames all over the carnival. Well, look, they've formed a bucket brigade. Perhaps they can control the blaze. I hope so. Let's stay right here. All right. Anything we can do to help? No, no, I don't think so. Thanks for the Pass it along. Pass it along. Well, just in case this situation of ours wasn't difficult enough, we have to have a fire at the carnival. Oh, it isn't too much of a fire. But it would have been if it weren't caught so quickly. I'm wondering about something. What were you wondering about, Vance? Oh, hello, Bryce. Markham, do you know the owner of the carnival, Stephen Bryce? Yes, we've met. This fire is going to hurt you, Bryce. Sure, but what can I do about it? This joint is drinks. Superstitious, Mr. Bryce? For me? Yes. You have to be superstitious to get leery when a guy is murdered in your show and then a fire breaks out the next day? No, I imagine not. Hey, Vance. Just when I was coming along, you were telling Mark and you were wondering about something. What? It doesn't concern you. No? Well, those firemen certainly have this under control now, Markham. Uh, Mr. Bryce, you won't have any problem about this fire now. We did some damage, of course, but I don't think it has any real importance in view of the fact that it was brought under control so quickly. I guess you're right. Hey, get a load of that big hose going into action. The fire will be out in a moment now. But, Markham, you said that you didn't think the fire had any real importance, didn't you? That's right. It was checked immediately, and it's practically out now. How could it have any importance? I'm not sure. But what would you say if I told you that the fire and the murder of Whitey Rand are tied up? You feel all right, Vance? I feel wonderful, Mr. Bryce. Better now than I've felt at any time on this case. At last, I have something to work on. The fire might tell me who broke Whitey Rand's neck so I can break this case. <laughs> This is District Attorney Markham. The murder case we're working on concerns the death of Whitey Rand, found with his neck broken at Stephen Bryce's outdoor carnival. We have several suspects, none of whom Philo Vance has seen, but a fire at the carnival apparently has given Vance an idea as to who might have killed Rand. What the connection between the fire and the killing is, I don't know. But Vance has had more astounding theories than that and been right. Meanwhile, I've asked Vance to come into my office for a talk. It's quite a problem, you know, Vance. People's necks don't break very easily. I know, Markham, and it was very apparent that Whitey Rand wasn't hit with any kind of an instrument. The medical examiner says there were no marks that would indicate he was slugged. Which gives us a double problem, of course. How was Rand killed, and who killed him? One thing about us, Vance, we don't often get simple things to decipher. For which I am duly thankful. <laughs> Murder intrigues you, doesn't it? Not exactly. It's like this, Markham. Somebody believes he can figure out a plan which nobody else can trace back. I like to find ways to trace a murder back, of which the most important, of course, is a clue. Which we don't have at the moment. But which we will have, even if I have to manufacture one. That's a new business you're in, clue manufacturing. <laughs> How do you do that? Well, you take a motivation, Markham, yes. and you enlarge on it until you're reasonably certain you're right. Then you work on it until it reveals something you didn't know before, mm -hmm. and there's your clue. Hmm. I know you have a theory about this murder, Vance, but do you have a motivation? I have several. But carnival people are curious people, Markham, and the solution of this mystery might very well be a freak. <laughs> to all of us. Nobody is talking to anybody else. Uh, look, everybody, this is a dinner table, not a morgue. We're worried, Betty. If they close the carnival permanently, we have no job. So what, Letty? Look at Jolly Irene. <laughs> yeah, she weighs 475 pounds. So if she doesn't eat for a while, it'll do her good. And her husband, Slim, he never eats anyhow. <laughs> and how about Ajax? Me? <laughs> yeah, you're a fire eater. You can always bum a match and have dinner. <laughs> what is it, Ajax? Eh, Soup to hot burn my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's better. Now we are acting more like ourselves. What have we got to worry about anyhow? We can get jobs. Letty and I can get a job. Everybody hires Siamese twins. Uh, every carnival needs fire eater. Sure. And a fat woman and a thin man and a magician and a strong man and concession operators. <laughs> Even Bryce can get another job. Oh, <laughs> what would the owner of our little company need a job for? That fire yesterday burned down the carousel, but it was insured for plenty. Right? Your sister mean even if it was not insured, he could get job operating whirl around. Yeah. I'm not three good whirl around operators in country. And Bryce was one of best before he took over Carnival. Well, then it is like Betty said. We all can get jobs, so what are we worried about? That's right. Let's do something to cheer ourselves up real good. 
And I know what we will do that will give us some real laughs. What is that, lady? What is it people always do when they come to our carnival and they're looking for relaxation? They come over to our tent, look at us, and laugh. Exactly. Let's all of us get some real laughs. Let's go out and look at people. Attorney Markham speaking. Markham, this is Vance. I'm down at the carnival grounds. If you are, you're awfully lonesome. There's nobody on the grounds, is there, Vance? No, but things are beginning to add up to me. I know the fire started your mental addition, Vance. What's happened since? Well, it is possible that I can tell you how Whitey Rand's neck was broken. We have several theories. Such as? Crando, the strong man, might have cracked Rand's neck. True. Two people working in unison might have done it. In fact, it might have been done in any of several ways. But not without there being some kind of a mark on the neck. A bruise, a discoloration. And there wasn't. No, I told you, not a trace of one. Then I'm getting close to home. Markham, please dig up a man named Freddy, if you can. Freddy? Freddy who? I don't know his second name, but he ran one of the carnival rides. You can check the records and find him, I'm sure. I'll try. After that, what? Well, then I'd like you to bring Freddy with you and meet me at the carnival at a ride called the Whirl Around. The ride where people sit in little cars and are spun around and around? Exactly. That's the Whirl Around. And if I'm right, it's going to result in our not going around in circles on this case. You pull this lever here, Mr. Markham. That starts the cars going round. Go ahead, pull it back. Well, Vance is in one of the cars. I want to see if he's ready for us. Just a second, Freddy. Uh, Vance. Start it up, Markham. Here we go. Now, the reason this ride's so tough to operate, Mr. Markham, is that you've got to watch so many things. The speed, the gears meshing. you got to see they mesh just right so the cars bump but yeah. never go off the track. Uh-huh. Then when you got the right speed, you move that lever up a little. Go ahead, move it. All right. There we are. Keep watching them gears every second. You watch it. Oh, Vance. Really... He'll be around again in a second so I can talk to him. Fine way to hold the conversation. Uh, Vance, have you found out anything? Yes, Markham, I'm sure I have. Does he want me to stop the machine then? I'll ask him. Here he comes. Uh, Vance, do we stop this thing now? Of course not. I'm having fun. I'm not. Let's stop this thing, Freddy. Right. Just reverse the handle on that lever. That's it. What was the trouble, Markham? You want to ride, do? Not exactly. Come on, Vance. I'll help you out of that car. I'm quite all right, my friend. That certainly was a thrilling experience. I imagine it was. But how did it help our case? Well, Markham, I found out something very important. Oh, Freddy. Hey, Mr. Vance, what's up? Where were you when Whitey Rand was killed? Home and in bed. If the time the paper said he was killed is right, I like my sleep. You can prove that. Why not? He can prove it, right? All right, we'll give him a chance to. But, Freddy, this whirl around is a difficult ride to operate. Who else could do it? Nobody else. Are you sure? I was teaching a young punk, but he wasn't very good at it. Who taught you? The boss, Mr. Price. Uh-huh. Best well around operator in the country before he took over the carnival. And when was that? A couple of years ago. Vance, there was a fire, and you said that proved something. Now you took a ride on this amusement device, and apparently that proved something, too. Would you mind telling me exactly what the fire and the ride indicate? Yes. They indicate Whitey Rand's murderer. But they also indicate that there isn't a way in the world at this moment that I can prove who killed Rand. You can't? But I can try. Markham, would you get Mr. Bryce to my office at nine tonight? No, Crandall. My sister would do it. She would be glad to do anything that would help you and Sally, but I won't let her. You must do it. Must say you killed Whitey Rand. I'll say it. Sure, I'll say it. They can't do anything to me. I've claimed that I killed him. Then nobody will bother you or Sally, Crandall. Police question me, they question Sally. They say he killed Rand or I killed Rand. I think they arrest us. They won't if I confess, and that's just what I'm going to do. Betty, you can't. Can't I, though? You just wait and see. Think of the publicity we'll get. One of the Siamese twins is a murderer, but the other is innocent. That's justice in this case. Please do, Miss Betty. Nobody bother you then. And police leave Sally and me alone. Do this for me. I take care of you. All right, Betty, I'll let you do it. But, Crandall. Yeah? Don't take care of us the way maybe you took care of Whitey Rand. Vance, where are you, Vance? In here at my private office, Mr. Bryce. Please come in. I'm coming in. Tell me why you had the district attorney ask me to come in. Please close the door, will you? What's the idea of keeping your back turned toward me? It's my own idea. And there's no need for it to be a secret any longer. Look at me. 
What's with you wearing that cotton mask over your nose and mouth? That's the idea I was telling you about. Look over on my desk. What do you see, Mr. Bryce? Now, this is really getting funny. Five balloons. What are you doing with five balloons? I'll show you. Mr. Bryce, I know you killed Whitey Rand. What? Of course, I don't know why you killed him, but I know how you did it. Unfortunately, I can't prove it. Now, isn't that too bad? Yes, it's the reason I've got to kill you. Now, let's keep the same, Vance. What did you say? I said I've got to kill you. I can't miss on a case, and I can't prove you killed Rand, even though I know you did. So these balloons, this mask, and this office, which you will observe is airtight, are necessary. Now, the door locked. Briefly, Mr. Bryce, sometimes the machinery of the law allows a guilty person to remain at liberty because of the word proof. I don't have it in your case, so you're going to give it to me or die. You're a madman, Vance. I've never been accused of that before. These five balloons I now hold in my hand, one of them contains a poisonous gas. They're all the same color, so I don't know which one it is, but I don't care. This mask will protect me from the gas. If I don't talk, you'll break the balloons. One by one. Like this. Don't. 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 Mm, apparently, that was one that didn't contain the gas. Four more. And with each one, your hope of living gets slimmer. Want to confess, Mr. Bryce? No, I don't. I never will. I would. Uh, not the gas balloon. Three more, Mr. Bryce. You still have a chance, if you confess. What makes you so sure I did it? I didn't. I didn't kill Whitey Rand. But two more. I can't admit anything I didn't do. Apparently, I left the gas balloon for last. Well, Bryce, you go jump in the lake. The whole thing was a trick. There was no gas in... <coughs> Let me out of here. The door's locked. Let me out. I'm dying to open this door. Oh, Certainly. Why did you kill Whitey Rand? What was the motive? Uh, I'll tell you everything. Everything. I killed Rand because he knew I had swindled the former owner out of the carnival and he was blackmailing me. Now, open this door. Keep talking, Bryce. <coughs> After you tell me all I want to know, I'll tell Markham how I knew it was you who killed Rand. Well, Mike, Van solved the Whitey Ranch challenge. Now let's get on home. Right. But did you read how he did it? Sure. He made believe he had gas in one of the balloons, and he sold the idea so good, that guy Bryce started coughing and confessed. That didn't take no brains. But, but figuring out Bryce was the killer, did. You see, Vance knew that Rand's neck was busted. There were no marks on him. So he figured that Rand was tied to that whirl-around ride one night after the carnival closed, and the thing spun around so fast that Rand's neck was snapped. I know, I know. And he found out that only two guys could operate the whirl-around. Bryce and a kid named Freddy who had an alibi. Yeah. The paper said something about Vance getting the idea that Bryce was guilty from the fire at the carnival. That's right. Vance figured the fire was supposed to wipe out the carnival. Mm -hmm. Bryce would collect insurance and get out of the country, and nobody's bothering from then on. Yeah. They'd better stop at this life. Oh. You know, that balloon idea of Vance's was pretty smart. Oh, was it? Who'd be scared just because a balloon broke? Hey! <laughs> Who'd be scared? You'd be scared. That kid just broke a balloon over there, and it almost had you jumping out of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, well, that's the end of the balloon. Yep, the end of the balloon and the end of the well-around murder case. <laughs>